buddy. I'd like to get back to my series on Jacob and Esau and their outcome, but especially Esau. It's all becoming very clear to me today in these last couple of years of the true nature and scope of what's going to happen in the end times. Jesus Christ is coming back literally to make war and to make war on specific nations. And Edom happens to be one of the off-mentioned targets, Edom and Babylon. And I'd like to talk about that. Let me uh, call this the controversy of Zion. Come near, ye nations, to hear and listen. You people, let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his, his fury is upon all their armies. He has utterly destroyed them. He has delivered them to the slaughter. That's Isaiah 34, 1. Now, this, when Rebekah, the prophet, uh, patriarch Isaac's wife, had trouble in her pregnancy, she sought the Lord for answers, and he told her, two nations will be in thy womb. Now, she couldn't have any idea how that would all play out in subsequent history. Uh, think about it with me for a minute. In her womb, the one child, Esau, the oldest, would become the father of a powerful kingdom called Edom, and they would become the inveterate foes of Israel. Now that nation would intermingle and intermarry with her neighbors, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Ishmaelites, as well as a host of other Arab tribes. They would worship a variety of false gods until they would eventually be united in an Arab-based form of paganism called Islam. Thus, the nation of Edom would become the Islamic Yuma, Uma which would spread across the globe, incorporating many other nations in an aggressive campaign. For Islam would enclose, encode within its tenets the grievances of Ishmael, Esau, and Hagar. Thus, <laughs> within her womb is a potential nation of 1.7 billion people. But well, that's the amount of the Islamic world, okay? All in her womb. Now, the second child, Jacob, would become the 12 tribes of Israel. He would bring to the world, and they would bring to the world, the revelation of God himself through prophets, priests, and kings, and the development of the Hebrew scriptures. Through him also would come the promise of God to Abraham, that he would have a son who would be a blessing to every family on earth. That is referring to the Messiah, the seed of the woman, the savior of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ would come through Jacob, and in spite of much apostasy and judgment, the Jewish nation would remain intact and the faith would develop into Christianity. Thus, out of her other son, people from around the world of every nation and tongue would come to embrace the only true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That also was in her womb. Think about that. Two billion people today call themselves Christians. She could date all this in her womb and they're fighting. Rebecca had all of that in her womb, and the children fought in her womb. They were twins, but they couldn't have been any more different from each other. That fight in that womb, as recorded in the first book of the Bible, has continued to this very day and is a portent of the very last conflict before the millennium. Little could she know these things, nor could she have the capacity to grasp the one day Every man, woman, and child would be affected by that struggle and would be sucked into it one way or the other. The controversy, which is engulfing all nations, pulling strong nations such as the U.S., Russia, China, and Iran into an utter maelstrom in the Middle East, is basically the same issue which the book of Genesis raises in the story of Jacob and Esau. God chose Jacob. But Isaac chose Esau. The modern Arab Muslim Near Eastern world is biblically what is referred to as Edom. Now the whole world is pulled into the fight between Jacob and Esau. Neutrality has become impossible. 
Most of today's world sides with Edom in the controversy of Zion. Seeding land gave to a God gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to Muslim terrorist states. UNESCO of the United Nations just ceded the very tomb of the patriarchs to this terrorist state, in spite of the historic fact that the patriarchs obviously are all Jewish. This madness will lead to the terrors of Isaiah 34. Those who pass out sweets and rejoice in terror acts against Jewish innocents are now under God's ban, according to Isaiah 34. They are dedicated to utter destruction. Let me uh, read this. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, his fury upon all their armies. He has utterly destroyed them. He has delivered them to the slaughter. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Edomia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. He's talking about a specific people, Edom, and he says they're the people of my curse. They're coming to judgment. The Arab Muslim world and all nations who side in her hatred and bloodshed against Israel are now set for wrath and destruction at the hands of the Lord over the controversy of Zion. We complete our exposition of Isaiah 34. It says, All the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. The heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. All their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falls from the vine and as a falling fig tree from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Edomia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood, is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Bozrah, that's Petra, and a great slaughter in the land of Edomia. And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Isaiah 34, 4 through 8. The location is given, Edomia, that's Edom, the just south west of the Dead Sea, and northwest of Arabia. Bozrah is the biblical name for the place that the world knows of as Petra, that fantastic rock-carved city. It's payback time for all of those who rejoice in uh, shedding innocent Jewish blood based upon the everlasting hatred that Obadiah, Ezekiel, and Amos warn about, but that Islam has carefully nourished and spread around the world. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword. He did cast off all pity. His anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. But I'll send a fire upon Teman, which shall devour the palaces of Bozrah. Amos 1, 11 through 12. Teman is a district in that same place. Habakkuk saw the second coming of Jesus when he said, God came from Teman. Isaiah saw Jesus coming to Edom and trampling on the vineyard of the Lord's wrath. Look it up in Isaiah 63. The bloodthirsty ones such as Isis, Isil, Al-Qaeda, Daesh, Hezbollah, and all of the rest of the Islamic rabble are likened as to sacrificial animals coming down to Zion, not knowing that they've been fattened for a slaughter. For God is a God of righteous vengeance, and the set time is near to execute his wrath. Now listen to this. The streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night or day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Isaiah 34, 9 through 10. There's two places on earth that even in the millennium and after will be uninhabitable forever. One will be Edom and the other will be Babylon. Now we saw shades of this during the first, first Gulf War. Notice that description, streams turned to pitch. Well, there are streams of oil in that part of the world, but when they go on fire, they become pitch. The dust, uh, 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 the dust becomes brimstone, burning, burning stones. When Saddam Hussein set alight the oil wells as a military tactic, 
The all-rich Middle East will be set afire in the day of vengeance, and black clouds of pitch will burn to increase the horror of that day. Then listen to God's description, Isaiah 34 again. The cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. He shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. So the only inhabitants will be the unclean birds, the birds associated with eating carrion, eating death. Part of Esau's inheritance will be rendered uninhabitable forever. So great is the destruction coming upon them. The very expression which Jesus cited and applied to the fires of hell, the smoke of their torment, actually comes from this passage. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there. All her princes shall be nothing. The Palestinians, the Edomites, the Islamic terror groups, they're going to call for their allies on that day, and they're not going to show. The sheikhs, the nobles, and all of the religious and political leaders of Edom shall vanish on that day. They're long gone, nowhere to be seen. The fire they've set with their lies. And in my lifetime, 50, 60 years of incitement of ignorant people through uh, radical Islam. And they, they have brought upon themselves the day of vengeance. Now, if you're a Palestinian or an Arab here, I'm, I'm not going to tell you you're doomed. There is a way out. God told uh, e uh, Esau, if you just serve your brother Jacob. In other words, if you just humble yourself to the religion revealed by the Jews, which is Christianity. Salvation belongs to the Jews. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Millions of Arabs have been saved down through the years. But for those who persist in this false religion, your day is coming, your day of judgment, okay? And on that day, your, your allies won't show up. The thorns will come up into their palaces. I'm quoting Isaiah again. Nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof. It'll be an inhabitation of dragon and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the de desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the satire shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. There shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Notice the confusion, the chaos, the death, the desolation, the fear uh, in the day of the Lord for Bosra, for Edom, for Edomia, for uh, uh, Timon. Isaiah 34, 13 to 15. Because of God's anger, the curse of creation prevails in Edom, and the only birds or animals are those who dwell in solitary, humanless places. Edom is a place under God's ban. It's dedicated to utter de destruction. And then Isaiah says again in 34, and what a chapter, you ought to read it yourself, 16 through 17. <coughs> Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it gathered them. And he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. He's talking about owls, cormorants, and jackals. Okay. He's decreed this, Isaiah 34, 16 through 17. Have any of Isaiah's other prophecies failed? Did Jesus indeed come once into the history as the man of sorrows acquainted with grief to take away our, our sins? Yes. Did he not successfully bear all our sins and transgressions as Isaiah predicted? Surely not one word of Isaiah's prophecies have failed, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Even so has God appointed the terrifying end of those on the wrong side of the controversy of Zion. Wild and lonely and terrifying beasts will be the only possessor of Edom's land, which will otherwise be desolated forever by the hand of the holy God who has so decreed. Oh, dear Arab friends, Muslims, please turn while there's time. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Greater is Jesus than all the false gods and than Allah. Uh, there's still time if you humble yourself. This judgment is coming from the Holy God, but he put it in this book to warn all of us that we might flee. Now, we in the West, we're in big trouble too. Our sins are so great and God is coming to judge us. But please understand what's going on here. Shalom. God bless.